Hello and welcome to webinar series, myself Shanti and today's topic for discussion is critical thinking in oncology care. In oncology where every decision taken beside impacts a life. Critical thinking is not just a skill, it is a necessity in today's fast evolving medical field. To guide us through this important topic, I now welcome Dr. Bithyun Naidu Garo, who is our senior consultant um, medical oncologist and hematologist from High Tech Yeshwada Unit. I welcome you, sir, and we are very privileged to have you with us today. Hello. Thank you for having me. I am Dr. Naidu. Okay. Yes. And uh, moving ahead, sir, for the discussion as the first slide for your expert insight on why critical thinking in onco nursing matters, sir, especially for bedside senior nurses. No. Over so, to you, sir. Normally, there are only a few kinds of patients who get admitted in oncology wards, right? Majority of the time, we do daycare chemotherapies where people come in the morning and go back in the evening. But if you look at people who get admitted in the ward, there are four kinds of patients. One is terminally ill, who come for palliative care or who come to have a fairly dignified way of going. Going. One is that. The second thing is side effects of chemotherapy. People come with fevers and neutropenias. Three, the third kind of a patient is a patient who is awaiting a diagnosis. Is a, who is awaiting a diagnosis. And the fourth kind of a patient are usually liquid tumors or hematological malignancies. Yes, if you see any oncology ward, these are the four kinds of patients who are admitted on a regular basis. Yes. One is side effects of chemo. Second is palliative care or terminally ill. Palliative care, bar terminally ill. Some people go home, some people die in the hospital. Three is uh, febrile neutropenias and four is awaiting diagnosis. Okay. Yes. So uh, those are the four kinds of patients. Yes. And uh, majority of the oncology patients are uh, usually sick. If, if somebody is admitted in a ward, especially in an oncology setting, that means the patient is sick. Patients yes. who are well with cancer usually walk around, take care of things, do their own things, right? Yes. So if somebody is very sick or in getting sick, that's when they get admitted. So nursing, bedside nursing or people in the ward should be aware of those four things. How do you deal with a terminally ill patient? Terminally ill patients come with four main problems. Pain, uh, pain, oxygenation issues, mobility issues, bed bond, yes. um, and uh, yeah, food nutritional issues. Nutritional, yes. Nutritional issues. When you have a terminally ill patient, the first and foremost thing is for an oncology nurse is to listen to the patient. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's not all about interventions. Patients need somebody to talk to them, somebody to listen to them. Majority of the times you cannot solve all problems. Yes. But sometimes when you listen to them, they're fairly happy. They should be a little more empathetic to them in the sense that when they call you, you should go immediately. A lot of times, kya hota hai? majority of the nurses think anyway, dying patient, anyway, terminally ill, these problems will be there. We cannot solve anything. But at the end of the day, those are the patients who require a lot of attention in terms of staying there, listening to them, answering calls on time, yes. answering calls on time being a little more receptive to the attendance, not getting annoyed with the numerous questions they have, numerous calls they give. So a little bit of empathy and a lot of patients from nurses for terminally ill. Changing positions, frequently changing positions, avoiding bed sores, nebulizations, pain medication, on time like morphine, tramadol, whatever the doctor has prescribed. And majority of the time, the nurses are even given freedom to give pain medications on their own. Like yeah. in my ward, if I tell the nurses, if there is pain, please give morphine without asking me. Right? At some, yeah. we, we, are, we do give a lot of freedom to our nurses here saying, these are terminally ill. Patient has come for pain. 
so he should be pain free majority of the time the attendants have been explained so the nurses are free to take certain decisions like giving pain medications uh, uh, raising a med call or yeah. issues when somebody is breathless you know you might not shift the patient to the icu but you can give nebulizations last six etc so terminally ill that's how we do things first is to be receptive to their problems yes. to is to be receptive to attendance yes. to make their uh, last few days as painless and as comfortable as possible okay as possible that is terminally ill the other two kinds of patients which you see are hematological malignancies and febrile neutropenias yes. uh, both are almost treated the same way where hand hygiene masking is very important as long as you do as long as proper hand hygiene is maintained as long as you wear a mask you deal with lines carefully i mean in the sense we are always in a hurry to close those caps and iv lines changing fluids not using iv sets recurrently yeah. not let them hanging down by the by bed side okay yeah. or and talking about proper personal hygiene like mouthwashes sits bath all those things well pick line dressings or chemopod dressings once every few days five days we, that's what we do five every five fifth to seventh day here yeah. so these things should be done on time the doctor need not tell the nurse the nurse should be proactive in implementing strategies implementing in things implementing things where yes. you you know uh, certain things which are in their hands which is hand hygiene maintaining uh, good charts are very important good temperature charts are important not writing whatever temperature we have and good blood pressure monitoring charts are important because any drop in blood pressure any fever spike on medicines uh, any pulse rate variations okay these things to be yes. have catched very importantly and very immediately looking for bleeding spots on the tongue looking for bleeding yes. asking for bleeding okay these yes. three things are all these things are important the nurse should be aware that in a cyto pancytopenic patient or a neutropenic patient what are the things that can happen what can happen fever can happen any time if the infection is not controlled hypotension tachycardia respiratory rate can go up somebody might say i have been fine and i have had a i'm feeling breathless now suddenly that means the sepsis has worsened we yes. cannot ignore the respiration yes. oxygen saturation falling just giving 2 liters of oxygen or 4 liters of oxygen is not enough you should be able to you should be able to hike up or uh, intimate the doctors there that there is yes. a drop in blood pressure that there is a drop in increase in pulse rate or his respiratory rate is high or oh, and look for bleeding spots so critical care nursing that's how you deal with palliative care and uh, what, what in neutropenic patients that's what we do majority of the time okay and yes. uh, keep talking to them okay yes yes so So, mm. sir, here, yeah, um, like as you said, there are you know four to five categories of patient who is admitted in on coset, and as uh, you know, you rightly said uh, the alarming signs which they can always you know uh, throw. So, planning, you think planning is also very important, as you said. Somebody, you know, the nurse should listen to. They should, you know, you know, take few empathetic steps. All that planning also is very important to meet their personalized needs of the patients. no planning is very important for the doctor as well as the nurses right yes, when we do yes. rounds we talk to them when we admit a patient we have set goals in mind yes so when we admit a patient there are certain plans of care so if for example in terminally ill i say dnr straight away we talk about yes. do not resuscitate on the first day yes. for example cytopenic patients etc we give them warning signs like uh this is a patient the recovery might take this long the recovery might take 5 days the recovery might take 7 days yes. and if a fever spikes comes again please do blood culture start this antibiotic if sometimes the fever yes. comes in the night yes. let us see let uh, we do blood count so say please expect bleeding 
looks, look at him. If somebody is feeling a little sick, looking a little sick, look at his blood pressure, look at his respiratory rate. So it's a conversation. It's not only the nurse, nurses have to be taught or nurses have to be talked to about what to expect in each patient. Yes. In the sense, yes. when we do rounds, this is a patient, you might expect this. So please look for this. For a period of time, what happens when we keep talking, the nurses gain enough knowledge to tell us yes. or find small signs of deterioration or small signs of improvement. Yes. Okay. So over a period of time, it takes. It takes a little few months or a few years to know uh, in each patient, right? But the conversation planning has to be done in conjunction with the concerned nurse in the sense yes. The nurse is always with you. So you tell her what to expect when we do round, morning rounds, evening rounds. We tell them this in, in the night, if something happens, this is what you should do. So yes. as doctors, we do see what cannot we expect are heart attacks that yes. we cannot expect. Pulmonary embolisms, we cannot expect. Strokes, yes. we cannot expect. Yes. But the things in oncology... You can always guess a little earlier what is going to happen next. Okay, majority of the time, 95% to 99% of the time in any oncology patient, you know what is going to happen the next day, next day, next day. Okay, yes. what to expect yes. and how to do things. So there's always a plan in mind. Yes. Yes, sir. As you said rightly that, uh, yeah, I I see your nurses like, uh, you know, whenever I talk to your nurses, they have their set of protocol, which has been taught and, you know, always you guide them in terms of end of life and uh, uh, taking care of catheters and all. So uh, you think also, sir, like open communication is done from your nurses to you or with the patient, because I think open communication is very important. I mean, sometimes we see nurses, they feel little pure to, you know, speak to the doctor or to the patient or maybe language is a barrier. So what is your insight on the same, sir? Language is not a barrier. We all talk English. So at the end of the day, language is never a barrier. Communication is important. Communication is important everywhere. In yes. in, in any field, forget oncology. Any field, yes. in oncology, anywhere. Okay. If I don't talk to my nurses or if I don't explain them or tell them what to expect or that, they tell they don't tell me what they are looking at. It's yes. very difficult. Exactly. So the nurses have open communication is very important. So uh, we have come to the end of the discussion, sir. And uh, here I we wish to we like to, you know, have your uh, valuable message for the whole oncology nurses uh, in short. Nothing to do well. Be happy. Have fun. That's all. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, sir. And uh, I urge all the viewers. So that was only time bound discussions. And uh, we urge all the participants to just log in www.ishwadahospitals.com. You can have a many more uh, health talks and other uh, information as well. We end the session. Thank you, sir, for your valuable time. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please take care. Thank you.